some of the things that we do in life, you know, to try to get us through our endeavors, to try to help us achieve our goals and dreams. Some of you need to rewrite those contracts with the life, okay? Now, prior to being born into this realm, we have a soul contract that we each agree to. And so that means that when you're in the spiritual realm, your spirit guides come to you. Many of these spiritual guides are your ancestors. They come to you and they tell you what lies ahead. They tell you some of the challenges that you'll face in this life, in this world. They tell you some of the things that you'll evolve into, you know, um, some of the things that you'll do, some of the things you'll succeed at, and some of the things you'll fail at. But nevertheless, we are all shown almost like footage, almost like a video, a preview of what we are to expect from this life. And I know that may sound crazy, but at the end of the day, we agree to it. And you're probably thinking, you mean to tell me, knowing all of this that I was going to go through, knowing all of these things that I would have to endure, knowing all of the obstacles that I'd have to overcome, all the mounts I'd have to climb, all the countless disappointments, I still agreed to come here? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes, that's what I'm telling you. And so here's the thing. If you agreed to come here, and you knew all that lay ahead, then you should absolutely, that should be more of your incentive and inspiration to do the work. Because that should tell you, in case you didn't know, that you are absolutely here for a divine reason. Okay? And so some of us, we signed that contract, right? We signed that contract. We agreed to it. But what happened was we didn't read the small print. We didn't read the small print. Some of us didn't read the part that said we're going to lose. We didn't read the part that said sometimes we're going to fail. We didn't read the part that said sometimes we'll be lied to. People will hurt us. People will try to break us. People will hate on us. Sometimes we won't have enough money to pay for bills. Sometimes our children will be unruly. Sometimes people that we trust will betray us. We didn't read that part. So when we get here and these things start happening, they start coming to pass, we don't know how to deal with it. We want to run and hide. We want to do things to help us escape reality, like drugs, drinking alcohol every day. Some of you may just start out with something like a beer, a simple beer, a wine cooler. And then months later, you find yourself drinking a half a pint of Jack Daniels. And then people tell you, family members, friends, people who care about you say, you need to stop this destructive behavior. You're drinking alcohol every day. Clearly you have a problem. You say, no, I don't have a problem. I can stop anytime I want to. But the fact is you do have a problem. And not only do you have that problem, you have numerous of problems. And the reason you have that specific problem is because of all the other problems that you just couldn't or just wouldn't deal with. So you tried to find the easy way out. Some people, rather than run from their problems, they try to see them through. That's what I try to do. You see, to me, a problem becomes a challenge. A problem becomes a challenge because I'm a competitor. And I have always viewed myself as a victor rather than a victim. And so how you see yourself has a lot to do with the way you focus on problems and issues that you come through in life. And when you are a person who worries more about what other people think about you than what you yourself thinks about you, then you're always going to be lacking in some aspects. Because here's the thing. You can't please everyone. And if you're going to worry about what other people think, and you already know you can't please all of them, then why would you even try what other people think of you has nothing to do with you. That's their business. It's not yours. Your business is to do the work, to set goals and try to achieve them, to make sacrifices when there's a time to. And some people say, and I've heard this throughout my life, I've heard people say, never sacrifice of yourself. I disagree. I sacrifice of myself all the time. They say, never compromise who you are. Well, you shouldn't compromise yourself, but you should sacrifice yourself. There is a difference in the two. You see, a compromise is when you 
say that maybe I won't do this so that someone else can do this. This is my way of sacrificing of myself to help them be better, to do better. But you should sacrifice of yourself because here's the thing. If you sacrifice of the person that you are right now, that can help you to evolve and to the person that you want to become. Let me say that again. If you sacrifice of the person you are right now, that can help catapult you into the person that you want to become. The divine self. That's who you should be trying to focus on and who you should be trying to be. Uh, so with that all being said, we have three factors within ourselves. We have three it's almost like three different personalities within us. We say me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. What does that mean to you when you hear that? Me, myself, and I. To me, <laughs> Woke One said, the, notice the static has been defeated. <laughs> so me, myself, and I. Now to me, that speaks for the physical self, right? The spiritual self and the conscious self, me, myself, and I. You should do things consciously to elevate your spiritual self. And you should also do things consciously to elevate and strengthen your physical self. Because mind, body, and spirit, all of these things work together. This is how we evolve and become better. When we work on all three factors, of our inner selves. Now, with that all being said, here's the thing. A lot of you are failing in the things that you're trying because you are pessimistic. You already think that you're going to fail. You ever heard that old saying? Uh, they used to say this a lot when I was in school. They'd say, oh, don't get your hopes up. You ever heard people say that? Don't get your hopes up? To me, that sounds crazy. What do they want you to do? Get your hopes down? You should absolutely get your hopes up. You see, if you have the mentality of don't get your hopes up, that's already setting yourself up for failure because you already think that you're not going to make it. You already think that you can't carry out the task and complete it. You already think that you're not going to succeed. So when you think you can't succeed, you don't succeed. And so thus, you set yourself up for failure. Don't get your hopes up. Who made that up? Who wrote that? I absolutely get my hopes up all the time, right? I have a high hopes because I have high vibrations. Those who don't get their hopes up have low vibrations. They operate on low frequencies, okay? Absolutely get your hopes up. And at the end of the day, here's the thing. If you don't know where you're going in life, it's probably because you don't know who you are. Now, and if you don't know who you are, that means you're likely suffering from an identity crisis. And if you are suffering from an identity crisis, that brings on a whole nother level of problems because people who suffer from identity crises, well, what they tend to do is they try to mold themselves off of other people. They try to look like other people, talk like other people, use other people's talking points. They try to, you know, follow someone else's lead. Now, there's nothing wrong with following someone's lead, we all should be able to be led. But at the end of the day, you should also know how to lead, right? It's nothing wrong with being inspired and motivated by someone else. And so you can be successful because you see that they are. You want to follow those people who are doing the things that you want to do. If you want to be successful, why would you hang out with a bunch of losers who want to sit on the couch and smoke weed and drink all day and watch BS on TV, you know, who don't want to go out there and look for jobs, who don't want to go out there and hustle and make money, who don't want to try to reach their highest potential. Why would you hang around those type of people if you want to be successful? You see, if you want to be successful, you hang around successful people. If you want to do things in life that are positive, then you hang around positive people. That's why I always say each one teach one. That's how we grow and thrive. 
Because when you teach someone the knowledge that you have, you can inspire, motivate, and encourage them to do better and be better. And then they can teach someone else and then so on and so on. But if you're sitting here just being pessimistic and just being a whole loser, all you're going to teach other people is how to be a loser and how to be negative and how to just always play the victim rather than trying to overcome obstacles and doing the things they need to do to overcome these obstacles and to reach their endeavors and their highest potential. Now, at the end of the day, there's a couple of poems I'm going to read to you all in a moment. But I want to say this. Yes, absolutely. Hang with like-minded people. Absolutely. Right? You have to be around people who are on one accord, on the same accord. There's different scenarios we've heard about. For example, okay, have you ever heard about um, stories where there's one person, right, who's criminal-minded, for example. This person wants to go out and they decide they want to rob a bank. Or they want to go out and they want to steal something, you know, they want to go out and jack a car or whatever. Now, you might not have any of those types of intentions or thoughts in your head, but you hang around this person knowing that this person is a whole criminal, knowing that this person doesn't want to do anything the honest way. They don't want to make a decent living. They just want to go out here and rob, steal, fraud, scam, whatever they can do. And you continue to hang around them because you just see something in them, right? Or maybe you feel obligated. Maybe you knew them since childhood. Maybe they're one of your relatives. Who knows? But for whatever reason, you hang around this person. And then this person goes to the bank one day. They say, oh, can you give me a ride to the bank? And they don't tell you they're about to go in there and rob that bank. That's how can you give me a ride to the bank? I need to go make a withdrawal. They don't tell you the withdrawal that they're going to make isn't from their own account. In fact, it's from the vault. So they go in there and rob the bank and they come out with a bag of money and they hop in the car and they tell you, drive, go. And you're sitting there like, what the hell just happened? What did you just do? Did you just rob that bank? And then you hear the sirens and you get pulled over and you both go to jail. But you tell the police, wait a minute, I didn't do anything. I didn't even know he was going to rob this bank. He told me he was going to make a withdrawal. I'm completely innocent. Do you think the police care if you didn't know that that fool was going there to rob that bank and steal all that cash? Do you think the judge cares? Do you think the jury cares? When you get to prison, do you think anybody's going to care? No, because everyone in prison claims they didn't do it, right? So while you're sitting there pleading your case, hey, I didn't do it. I shouldn't be here. Let me out. It's not my fault. Well, in a sense, it is your fault. Because I'm sure that you knew that that person was nefarious. I'm sure that you knew that that person was a thief. You knew this person was somebody you shouldn't be hanging around, but yet you chose to. Now, you see how just in a matter of minutes, sometimes even seconds, you can throw your whole life away simply by hanging around the wrong people? Now, I just told that whole scenario just to make you grasp the validity of how important it is for you to hang around, to be around, to make sure you know the type of people that are in your circle. Because you don't want to get caught up in some mess that you had absolutely nothing to do with. You're trying to live your best life. You're trying to be positive and stay focused and reach your goals and dreams. You don't have time for that. You see what happened to Michael Vick? That was a better example. Michael Vick was out there living his best life playing football. He had all the things that he probably ever desired. But he went to prison for three years because of the people that he chose to hang around. Now, he likely knew those people since high school or when he was younger. But at the end of the day, as I often tell you, there are some people who are just not in the same boat. And if we're not in the same boat, well, then we can't go on the same journey. So I'm going to need you to get on off at the next stop. That's what you need to tell them. That's what you need to tell them. And those types of sacrifices are not the types of sacrifices you make of yourselves. Those types of compromises are not the type of compromises you make for yourself. You can compromise when you're trying to help someone else evolve, when you're trying to keep the peace, when you're trying to be the bigger person. You can compromise then, but not when it's going to put you in harm's way, not when it's going to cause you a slew of problems that you may not be able to solve.
That's what you don't want to do. And so with that all being said, let me tell you something. So I talk to you all about discipline all the time and how you have to have self-discipline and you have to be willing to do the work, right? You know, sometimes we all fall short and we don't feel like doing certain things and we just want to, you know, relax and just, you know, sit at home and watch TV or watch videos. You don't want to get out and go do the work. Sometimes you just don't feel like it, right? And it's at those times when you don't feel like it that you absolutely should get up and go do the work. Okay, because here's the thing, when you're feeling good and you want to go out and put in that work, well, you don't need to be motivated. You're already motivated, right? It's the times that when you're feeling lackadaisical or you just feel like, you know, tired, you know, you don't want to work hard. You just need to rest. Those are the times that you need to be motivated and encouraged to go out there and do what you need to do. You don't have any days to take off when you're striving for success. You don't have any time to waste. When you're trying to live your best life and be the best that you can be, be the best that you can be at whatever you do. Everyone's not meant to be rich, but everyone sure ain't meant to be poor. And if you are poor, it's likely because you have a poor mindset because you feel like this is my circumstances. I was born into this. These are the cards I was dealt. This is what it is. No, that's not what it is. If you don't want it to be, that's what many of us allow it to be. You can be and do anything that you want when you put your mind to it, okay? You absolutely can. So I want to read you this poem. And the reason I want to read you this poem is because the first time I heard this poem, and it's very inspirational to me, the first time I heard this poem, I was 10 years old. I was 10 years old in the fifth grade. And my teacher, Mrs. Devers, read this poem to us. And let me tell you something. I never forgot this poem because at the end of the day, it has helped me through many times in life when I felt like maybe I wasn't enough, when I felt like maybe I didn't deserve to have certain things, when people talked down to me or when people made me feel like, you know, I couldn't make it, when they tried to talk me out of my dreams. I remember this poem and it got me through those things. It's called Be the Best of Whatever You Are by Douglas Mallock. If you can't be a pine on top of a hill, be a scrub in the valley, but be the best little scrub by the side of the real. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a bush, be a bit of grass and some highway happier make. If you can't be a muskie, then just be a bass, but the liveliest bass in the lake. We can't all be captains, We've got to be crew. There's something for all of us here. There's big work to do and there's lesser to do. And the task you must do is near. If you can't be a highway, then just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. It isn't by size that you win or you fail. Be the best at whatever you are. So with that all being said, one thing that I have always done in my life is I have always been competitive. Not necessarily competing against others, but more so competing against myself. When I set one goal and I reach it, I don't stop there. I set another. And when I reach that goal, I don't stop there. I set another. You see, that's because I'm constantly trying to evolve and elevate myself because I have not reached yet my fullest potential. I have not reached yet my fullest potential. I know that there is more to come. So as long as I know that there's more to come, there's more that lies ahead, I'm going to work as hard and relentlessly as I can to get there. That's what I'm going to do. Some of you give up too easily. You try something. It's not going the way you want it to go. So you just want to quit. You're just going to put it down. You're just going to leave and move on to something else. And then when that's not going the way you want it to go, if you feel like it's not going to, you know, come to fruition, you just want to give up and you want to quit. That's not the thing to do. You see, if you quit, that's the end of it. If you quit, it's over. That's the end. You just gave up. It's done. But if you keep trying, you may fail a few times. 
before you initially succeed, but you have to keep trying until you do. So you have to ask yourself, do you want to be a loser in life? Or do you want to be a quitter? Right? Do you want to win? Whether you win or lose, it's up to you. No one else can make you lose or win. It depends on the mindset, the mentality that you have. Other people can do and say all sorts of things to try to bring you down, try to pull you back in, you know, into the dark places that you've come from in your life. They can try to dim your light, but that only happens if you allow them to. It may look like you're never going to achieve your goals. It may look like you're never going to be able to win. It may look like the game is over. It's done. There's five seconds left. And we need to make a three-pointer. And you feel like that's it. It's done. It's a wrap. It's only a wrap if you want it to be a wrap. When you get disappointed in life, a lot of times you're the reason you're disappointed. Some people want to blame everybody else around them. Oh, my mother, she didn't do this and that when I was growing up. Well, my father, he wasn't there. My friends didn't encourage, encourage me enough. My husband or wife didn't love me enough. My children disrespected me. We want to make everyone else the problem when we experience disappointments. But you know who really disappoints you more so than anyone? It's you. No one else owes us anything. And I know a lot of you probably think that people owe you something. No, they don't. No one owes you anything. In fact, you only owe it to yourself. Now, if you don't want to put in the work to be the best person you can be so you can reap the rewards of your fruit, of your labor, if you don't want to put in the actions to get you to the next level in life, then you're not going to get there. You're just going to sit there and whine and complain. If you want to just, listen, you just want to sit there and be pessimistic and complain and whine all day, every day, and just be so negative and downtrodden, go right ahead. But don't bring that around me because I don't have time for it. I have a very short patience level for people who are pessimistic. I told you, you can come talk to me about your problems once. I might even listen twice. But after that second time, I'm not trying to hear your problems anymore. After that, we need to be all about solutions. I don't need excuses. I need solutions. Okay? That's what I always tell my students. I don't need excuses as to why you don't have your essay written. I don't need excuses as to why you didn't finish that PowerPoint assignment. I need results. I need solutions. You're supposed to do the work. This is your life, not mine. No one can live it for you. When you're doing bad, when you're feeling down, it's up to you to pick yourself up. Dust yourself off and keep on fighting. Keep swinging until you can't swing anymore. Right? It's never too late for anything until they're lowering that coffin into the ground. Then it's too late. That's when you know you're messed up. But until then, you need to be living your dash. You need to be fighting for your life and for your dreams and goals. That's what you need to be doing. And remember, even if it looks like you're losing, don't give up. Keep fighting. I showed a video on my other channel the uh, uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, actually, where the little girl whose father's a boxer, you all remember the video, the little girl was running and her shoe came off and she was in the race. She turned around and went back and grabbed that shoe. And she ran past everybody who was ahead of her and she won that race. Now, that's how you should look at life. That child could have just given up, sat on the sidelines and whined and complained, oh, my shoe fell off. I lost the race. At the end of the day, she grabbed that shoe, put it on, and she took off running. That's how you should be in life. Never give up. Be relentless in your endeavors. Be relentless in your pursuit of happiness. You owe it to yourself. Everything is not always as it seems. Sometimes we see things and we let those things discourage us. We say, I want a million dollars, but there's no way I can make a million dollars. That sounds crazy. That's impossible. It's only impossible if you think so. Because whatever you think, it's true. Whatever you start to think and focus your mind and energy and efforts on, and especially when you start to speak it out loud, right out of your mouth, it absolutely becomes true. It absolutely does. So with that all being said, don't get caught up 
with things that you see, with the way situations appear, because things are not always what they see. And in fact, sometimes they're just the opposite. With that all being said, I want to read this other poem to you. It's called The Cookie Thief. And it's a poem about, you know, how oblivious we can be and how wrong we can be and how we can think something is one thing, but it's not anything like it looks. This poem was written by Valerie Cox. A woman was sitting at an airport one night with several hours to go before her flight. She hunted for a book in the airport shops, bought a bag of cookies and found a place to drop. She was engrossed in her book, but happened to see that the man sitting beside her, as bold as can be, grabbed a cookie or two from the bag in between, which she tried to ignore to avoid a scene. So she munched the cookie and watched the clock as the gutsy cookie thief diminished her stock. She was getting more irritated as the minutes ticked by, thinking, if I wasn't so nice, I'd blacken his eye. With each cookie she took, he took one too. When only one was left, she wondered what he would do. With a smile on his face and a nervous laugh, he took the last cookie and broke it in half. He offered her half as he ate the other. She snatched it from him and thought, oh, brother. This guy has some nerve, and he's also rude. Well, he didn't even show any gratitude. She had never known when she had been so galled and sighed with relief when her flight was called. She gathered her belongings and headed to the gate, refusing to look back at the thieving ingrate. She boarded the plane and sank in her seat, though she sought her book, when, which was almost complete. As she reached in her luggage, she grasped, gasped with surprise. There was her bag of cookies right in front of her eyes. If mine are here, she moaned in despair, then the others were his, and he tried to share. Too late to apologize, she realized with grief that she was the rude one, the ingrate, the thief. So here this person was sharing his cookies with her. The whole time she's so ungrateful and mad thinking that he's stealing from her. And that's how it is. That's how it is. You see, sometimes in life, we are our own cookie thief. Sometimes people are trying to give us something, but we think they've come to take something from us. Sometimes people try to offer you free advice. Do you know how many people pay for advice when they go and pay clinical psychologists and psychiatrists and things? Counselors? You know how much money some people spend hundreds of dollars per hour paying for advice. But there's some people who try to give you free advice and you don't want to take it. You don't want to listen. Because you think they're trying to take something from you. You think they're trying to set you up. You think they're a hater. Because they may be giving you constructive criticism which is something you absolutely need i didn't say destructive criticism i said constructive criticism they're trying to tell you something that they see in you that you just might want to change because if you change that thing or those things you may have a better outcome you may be able to reach your fullest potential you may be able to maximize your capacity to no limits. You may, in fact, become limitless. But sometimes we don't listen because, for one, sometimes we don't like the person who's doing the talking. I know there's people in my family, there's friends that I've had that I told them things for their own best interest and they didn't listen to me. They didn't want to hear it. And the only reason they didn't want to hear it is because it was coming from me. But then someone else could come and tell them the same thing and they'll come back to me and say, hey, queen, you know, so-and-so told me I need to do this. And I'm like, I told you that too last year. Say what now? 
but you don't want to listen to me. Some people don't want to hear something just because it came from you. Sometimes we listen to people, but we don't really hear what they're saying because we have selective hearing. Some of us hear what we want. We misconstrue things. We take things with a grain of salt. Sometimes we feel like this person's not smart enough to be telling me nothing. I've got a college degree. They didn't even finish high school. Why would I listen to them? Well, you should listen to them because you can learn. Sometimes you can listen to a person who's failed numerous of times because they can tell you how not to fail. Sometimes you listen to someone who may not be as educated as you think you are, but they may be more educated in other things that you didn't learn in school. It's called life. It's called life. My great grandmother couldn't read or write. She couldn't read or write. But some of the best advice that I ever got in life came from her. Some of the best advice that I have gotten in life came from her. You can learn from a child, though you're an adult. Children are nothing more than little bitty humans. They have thoughts. They have intelligence. They may not have all of the life experiences and intelligence because they haven't been here long. But some of them are old souls. They've been here before. And these children, they can tell you something that can motivate, encourage, and inspire you. So at the end of the day, never shun someone who is giving you constructive criticism. Never look down on someone because you think that you know more than them or that you're better than them. The only fool is the person who thinks they know everything. If you think you know everything, then no one can teach you. You're not going to be receptive to the knowledge they're trying to give you and share. And thy people do not perish from lack of knowledge. They perish from the lack of the use of said knowledge. There's knowledge everywhere. There's knowledge in books. There's knowledge online. There's knowledge in other people. There's knowledge in the stars, in the sky. There's knowledge from the most high. There's knowledge all around us. We are in an information age, technology. There's so many advancements. There's no need for anyone to not know how to do most things because the knowledge is absolutely out there and it's available. With the click of a finger, you can just go to Google and look things up. How easy is that? But at the end of the day, whether you put the knowledge to use is up to you. You can sit here and listen to the spiritual teachings on this channel. You can listen to the spiritual teachings or motivational teachings from anyone. But if you're not putting it into action, it's just words. It's just words that you listen to. It's just vibrations. It's just a bunch of electromagnetic frequencies. If you're not going to use it, if you're not going to put it out there for your to increase your potential, to strengthen your abilities, and to help you on life's journey, then what are we here for? We have many things that we will go through in this life, in this world. Some of these things, they will be hard for us. They'll be painful. They'll be difficult. But like I always tell you in the words of Frederick Douglass, Without struggle, there is no progress. Some of you may not know what struggle is because you always had things given to you. Your parents always gave you things. You didn't have to struggle in college. You didn't have to worry about money. Your parents would come down on the weekends and bring you groceries and give you cash. That's what I saw my friends' parents do when I was in college. I'd see my friends, some of them, their parents would come on the weekends, stock up their refrigerator with food, you know, give them cash and all of that. They could go shopping, go to the movies. I didn't have that luxury when I was in college. When I was in college, I was a struggling student. I was struggling. Sometimes I didn't have food to eat. They had a chapel. You know, sometimes I'd go there and the priest would give me these meal tickets, like vouchers, so I could go and get something to eat. I remember one time I had this nefarious roommate. She stole all of them. Yeah. She stole all my vouchers, passed them out to her friends. 
I didn't have food for days, literally for days. But at the end of the day, none of that deterred me from going to class, from studying, doing my homework. None of that deterred me because I was determined. I am going to graduate, but not only am I going to graduate, I'm going to do it with honors. I'm going to leave here with the best grades possible. Some people used to laugh because they go out and party and have a good time and I'd be sitting in the room studying. And they'd say, why are you studying already? The test isn't until next month. I need a month to study. Why would you need a month to study? Because I'm going to ace this test and I'm not going to have any worries and I'm going to get 100. That's why I'm studying. And all those people who wouldn't study, who laughed and chose to go out and party and drink and have a good time and all of that, be distracted because they had one track minds and couldn't focus on a myriad of things. They didn't know how to multitask. Those people, well, a lot of them dropped out. They failed. Some of them graduated, not with honors. Some of them barely made it by. But at the end of the day, the choices you make are up to you. You wake up every day with a choice and a chance. You have a choice to decide. Are you going to live your best life? Are you going to fulfill your destiny, become the divine being that you were sent here to be? Every day you have a choice and you also have a chance to do all of those things. But the chance and the choice are up to you. Uh, so with that all being said, Inspired by Nature says, did you live on or off campus? I lived on campus. I lived on campus, beloved. Uh, I'm just saying, says, sometimes struggling students is more determined. Absolutely. Because here's the thing. I also knew someone by the name of Austin Percival. I believe that was his name. He came from a well-to-do family, had lots of money. And uh, I was a freshman when I met him. But he was a seven-year senior. He far overstayed his welcome. He kept changing his major and doing different things and whatnot. But he never really applied himself. He never really focused. Because likely, in my opinion, he was always giving handouts. He was always giving things from his family who had all this cash. Right? He didn't have to work hard for things in life like I had to. I worked since I was 15 years old. I got my first job when I was 15. I worked overtime the entire time, the entire summer before I went off to college because I knew I needed money. I did what I had to do. It was a struggle, but I made it through and I was proud of myself. Austin, he was given everything. I don't think he ever graduated. I don't think he ever graduated. Maybe he came back later, I don't know. But he was clearly a seven-year senior uh, when I was a freshman. And all because he didn't apply himself. He wanted everything to come to him easily. He wanted, he felt entitled. Some people want a million dollars, uh, but they don't want to work for a million dollars. And this life, you get what you work for. You don't always get what you want. You get what you work for, not always what you want. Some of, some of, some of you, probably go to work 40 hours a week and you work as hard as you can to do the best job you can do. And that's good. That's commendable. And I'm sure your boss enjoys it. I'm sure the company that employs you enjoys it because you're making them money. You're a benefit to them. Ask yourself, when are you going to be that much of a benefit to yourself? When are you going to be that much of a benefit for yourself? Don't you have a dream? that you've always had maybe since you were a child? Don't you have something that you've always wanted to pursue? Something you may have always wanted to do and you've never done? Why don't you work as hard on that as you do for your boss, as you do for this corporation? At the end of the day, if you can sacrifice of yourself for someone else, then you should absolutely, unequivocally, be able to sacrifice for yourself. With that all being said, I'm going to conclude this broadcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in once again to Queen Amadiah TV, More Than Meets the Third Eye. Afila said, hello, Queen Goddess. Thank you for all you do. I'll have to catch the replay. I'm at work now. Well, thank you, beloved. Thank you for your kind words, and I appreciate you. And thank you for your contribution to the channel. Have a blessed day at work. With that all being said, 
I wish you all love, peace, and prosperity. Um, Courtney J says, who was the poem by? Um, Valerie Cox. The the uh the poem, The Cookie Thief. I believe that was Valerie Cox. Let me double check real quick. That was written by Valerie Cox. Absolutely. The cookie thief was Valerie Cox. And the best at whatever you are. That was by Douglas Moloch. Douglas Malloch. Malloch. M-A-L-L-O-C-H. Okay. I always like to give credit where credit is due so that I'm not using someone else's words um, for my own personal gain, as some people do. They'll take other people's talking points and use it as if they came up with it. Amazing. But so with that all being said, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you do something productive and constructive today. Try to raise your vibrational frequency. And try to be the evolution that you want to see. Be the change that you want to be. And remember, we can't change our situations or circumstances until we first change our minds. All right? Enjoy the rest of this lovely day, and I will talk to you all again soon. Peace.